Now at 10, flooding concerns continue for the city of Miami, as does the war of words over who's responsible. Plus, second grade students at George Washington Carver Elementary raise money for a good cause. And a Joplin business celebrates a 10-year partnership with Ronald McDonald House. The four states most watched news starts now. All of the recent rain is causing a reoccurring problem, problem in Miami, Oklahoma to show back up. Flooding. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Anthony Saviello. River Park, Riverview Park is still underwater, though officials say levels are lowering. Highway 125 is closed due to water over the roadway, but is expected to reopen tomorrow afternoon. Mayor Bless Parker says the flooding and logjam on the Neosho River is a contributing factor. Um, you know, we, we think there has to be. Uh, you know, a lot of our flooding here is backwater flooding, and it's dam caused flooding. And that log jam is just another dam uh, right now that's in the way. So it, it's going to increase the backwater effect. Mayor Parker also says the GRDA is a large reason the town has been has had so many flooding issues. Well, meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at our weather. And temperatures dropping down to the lower 60s tonight. For the most of us, it's going to be pretty clear, but we do have some clouds and storms starting to roll in early around 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. We're going to keep an eye on that, not to mention we still have a flood watch in effect for Oklahoma and Arkansas counties that will stay in effect until Sunday at 7 p.m. Makes sense too. We've got a few more rounds of storms this weekend starting early tomorrow morning and that's going to go on all the way through uh, about noon tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on it. We have a low risk for most of our counties tomorrow, um, but most severe threat that we're looking at heavy rainfall and possibly hail, but I'll have more details for you in just a bit. All right, Lindsay, the state of Arkansas is pushing back on big changes made to Title IX. Last month, the Biden administration revised Title IX regulations to add protections for LGBTQ plus students. Title IX is a federal civil rights law passed in 1972. That's intended to prohibit sex-based discrimination in education. As Lisa Hudson reports, Arkansas governor has had some strong words for the federal government on Thursday. I've said before that the dividing line in this country is no longer between right and left. It's between normal and crazy. Appalled. That's the reaction Arkansas's governor says she has to the recent changes to Title IX from the Biden administration. When Title IX was first written, it was 37 words long. The message was simple. Men and women deserve equal access to higher education. Last month, President Biden released a reinterpretation of Title IX that comes in at an insane 459,000 words. Let that sink in. The original Title IX passed in 1972 to protect women from discrimination at schools and universities that received federal funding. Biden's new version includes protections against discrimination for the LGBTQ community. According to the rule, sex is no longer based on the commonly understood biological differences between men and women. It's based on how a person feels or their gender identity. To put it another way, Biden thinks anybody can be a woman just because they say so. Jacob Oliva with Arkansas's Department of Education says they support the governor's stance. We will not ignore Arkansas law. We will not let Washington undermine or erode our existing state laws such as the Fairness of Women's Sports Act in the given name act. The governor's executive order makes it clear to Arkansas educators follow state law, not federal. Women fought for so long to have equal access to sports and higher education. Are we really going to throw that all away in the name of political correctness? Governor Sanders said if any Arkansas schools lose federal funding for not complying, Arkansas will sue the federal government. More than a dozen states have already been suing the Biden administration over the changes to Title IX. Folks came out to Wildcat Glades in Joplin to take part in the semi-annual rummage sale event today. Some of the items up for sale included books, household and decorative items, tools, kitchenware, and a lot more. 
All proceedings from this sale goes directly to support efforts at Wildcat Park by the Nature Group. It's all donation based, so members of the public bring donations in and then we price it out and sell it. Um, so it's definitely a reuse campaign that we try to do. There's still time to cash in on this event. If you're interested, the rummage sale picks back up tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. April showers bring spring cleaning and the four states will do its share this weekend. Several cities in our area plan citywide yard sales this weekend. Cities participating include Carthage, Ornogo and Nevada to just name a few. For more information, including a link to add more yard sales, just head over to our website, koamnewsnow.com. Second grade students at George Washington Carver Elementary in Neosho embraced their entrepreneurial spirit today. Students took part in the school's annual Bloom Festival by hosting a farmer's market. The Bloom Festival helps students learn about issues bees face and learn how to grow pollinator friendly plants. Students helped plan and organize the event, which features plants they grew themselves and other students made crafts for the public to purchase. They have reached out to food trucks to come, they have made handmade goods to sell, and then it all goes back to a charity. It makes me feel amazing and nice because we've worked hard on those coasters and we've been hoping um, for people to buy them. Proceeds from this year's festival will go to help with medical expenses for the son of a fourth grade teacher at the school. Students at Rocky Comfort Elementary showed off their green thumbs and made a little green. The kids hosted their annual greenhouse plant sale today. Students put a lot of time and enthusiasm into cultivating more than 10,000 meticulously grown seedlings, all ready for purchase. The event gives the kids a chance to showcase their horticulture and business skills, as well as providing them with a lesson in responsibilities. So we start in August um, and this is an all year project for them. So we take cuttings of plants, we make hanging baskets. Um, I want them to be able to see like start to finish. Um, I want them to see the fruits of their labor. I want them to see that they can be successful in even little things that they do. The students are actively involved in every aspect of the plant sale preparation from planting and watering to pruning and tending as well as the sale itself. Today, Frank Fletcher Subaru and Joplin shared the love with Ronald McDonald House Charities of the four states. The dealership presented a donation for $22,000 to the family charity. Ten-year partnership has been raised in their 10-year partnership with Ronald McDonald House, they've raised nearly $170,000. Charity is very blessed to be very community supported. So we have a couple of fundraisers during the year, and then this will actually kind of be the bridge, the gap in between those fundraising times. So when we do our gift of light and love in December, when we've got our golf tournament in September, there's some funding time in there where things get a little bit lean. And so this is really great to help bridge that gap. The event also featured a ribbon cutting with members of the Joplin Area Chamber of Commerce. Week two of the hush money trial of Donald Trump comes up to a close. That and more coming up. Week two of testimony in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial is in the history books. Today, his former campaign press secretary took the stand. Michael George has the latest. So I'm not allowed to comment. Former President Donald Trump might not be allowed to speak about aspects of his hush money trial because of a gag order, but that didn't stop him from addressing reporters as he left the courthouse Friday afternoon, mostly about his race for president. These people are destroying our country, whether at the border, whether the horrible reports that came out today are jobs numbers with all you hear, whether inflation, which is destroying us, a lousy economy. Trump did not talk about the testimony of his longtime aide, Hope Hicks, only saying this. I was very interested in what took place today. He was feet away from Hicks as she told the court she was nervous to testify and hadn't spoken to Trump in two years. At one point, she broke down in tears. Earlier, prosecutors asked her about what happened within the campaign when an Access Hollywood video was released weeks before the election. When you're a star, they let you do it. In which Trump said he could grab women by their private areas. She testified about Trump's reaction, quote, 
He said that that didn't sound like something he would say and that the early strategy was deny, deny, deny. She said she was very concerned about what she termed a crisis in the campaign. She knows each person, where they sat, what they did, and she is the person who therefore connects all of the dots. Hicks said Trump spoke to her about his former attorney, Michael Cohen, making payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels to protect him from a false allegation, and that Cohen did so out of the kindness of his own heart. Hicks told the court that would have been out of character for Cohen. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Trump has paid a $9,000 fine after the judge ruled he violated his gag order. And universities across the country are calling in the police more and more to clear out pro-Palestinian encampments. But the demonstrators say they will continue to protest while the war in Israel and Hamas continues. Administrators say they are trying to ensure the safety of their campuses, especially as graduation ceremonies are set to begin. Lindsay is next, and a little later, Spiva Center for the Arts in Joplin hosts a new art class targeting, targeting a more mature audience. F furniture and we continue this evening, really nice, calm weather, a nice break from what we've had earlier this week. Now, taking a look at downtown Joplin earlier today, very nice outside. I wanted to save that shot from Cornell Complex camera because no clouds in sight. And that is a nice change of pace since last week. We've had storms almost every single day, uh, not to mention the tornado we had yesterday out in Joplin as well. So nice change of pace today. We do have a flood watch still in effect until 7 p.m. on Sunday for Oklahoma and Arkansas counties. We'll keep an eye on it in case it starts to expand into some of our Missouri and Kansas counties as well, since we do have a few more rounds of rain moving in through the remainder of the weekend. Now we did have that tornado touchdown near Joplin Airport. Main thing that happened, Springfield still going to do a survey on that tornado, but as of right now, it's an EF zero, uh, some structural damage to homes northwest of the airport. Um, but that was we had a low risk of storms yesterday. So, you know, with any low risk, with any risk at all, we're going to keep an eye out for any type of severe storms to pop up because it's spring season. It is severe weather season, so we are always on guard, always prepared for in case any of these storms tend to drop any severe threat like a tornado. Speaking of tomorrow, we do have a MCS line of storms moving in and right here. It's still just now moving into Kansas and Oklahoma, uh, starting to make its way in. It's hoping hitting our area closer to about 4 or 5 a.m. We do have a low risk as it moves into our area. It is going to be on a weakening trend. But like I said, like we just talked about, any type of risk is a risk. So be prepared. I'll be here early in the morning watching these storms and ready to go on air or live stream on YouTube. You can join us if anything does pop up. So we are expecting those scattered storms tomorrow, starting very early, continuing until about noon. Let's take a future look at that track. So this is that system moving through. And as you can see, it's stronger as it moves through Dodge City, Wichita. And you can see that line is very distinct. But as it starts to make its way closer to our area, it falls apart. We have more of those scattered thunderstorms, stronger uh, rain pours. But as it moves across that Missouri Kansas border, it is just going to fall apart. More widespread thunderstorms than anything. And that severe threat goes way down. Then after that, another line of storms starts to push in behind that front. Uh, the severe threat has gone down pretty significantly, but we do see a pop up of some stronger thunderstorms in those south southern Missouri counties. So we'll keep an eye on that and then more storms start to pop up again early Sunday morning. So as you can see, we've got a few days of some stronger storms tomorrow. Those storms come in early in the morning. We do have that low risk Sunday, not as low. It's a lower than um, Saturday risk, but we will still see some stronger storms. But that main threat will be moving in Monday evening into early Tuesday morning. We'll keep an eye out for that. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Art can be for people of all ages, and that's the exact message that Spiva Center for the Arts is sharing with its new studio, 55. 
The new studio is designed to be a creative haven for older adults and is open to adults age 55 and up. Organizers say they want to ignite the artistic passions of older adults with a dynamic blend of structured classes and open studio sessions. I think that accessibility and representation is really important and um, I really think that having a place where this, it's a really, really large demographic and it's important to me that they see themselves represented and that they have a place to come and feel like they're, feel like they're seen. Classes will be every Friday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. Coming up in sports, Pitt State softball looks to advance to the MIAA Tournament Championship, plus Missouri Southern Baseball begins their postseason. Brock Baldridge has the highlights and more. Missouri Southern Baseball begins its postseason journey this afternoon. The Lions are the number two seed in the MIAA. Now in the first round of the conference tournament, it's a best of three series. Southern hosts the number seven seed Northwest Missouri State. Missouri Southern opens up MIAA tournament play with its ace Cole Gaiman on the mound. But the Lions bats come to life right away. Bottom of the first, Nate Miskowski hits this one hard into left field. That scores a couple of runs to give Southern an early three to nothing lead. So Things are looking good early on. Score is 3-1 to one as we head to the fourth inning. Clayton, or Chayton Beck singles up the middle. The base is loaded and that scores two more runs. The Lions are far from finished yet. A couple batters later. Bases are loaded again for Ethan Clark as he splits the gap into right center. That will clear all the bases. Clark goes into second base with a double and he is fired up about it. Southern takes an 8-1 to one lead. Two batters later now. Will Doherty up at the plate. He hits this one over the right fielder's head, and that tallies another RBI double. The Lions score seven runs in the fourth inning. They dominate, dominate the Bearcats in this one. In game one, final score 12 to one. In Pittsburgh tonight, the Gorillas begin their postseason run as PSU is hosting the number six seed, Rogers State. We pick things up in the fourth inning now as MIAA second teamer, Nixon Brannon gives this ball a ride deep into the gap. That allows Dylan Kirahasi Choi Fu to score all the way from first base. And the Gorillas take a one to nothing lead. Later in the fourth, ducks on the pond for Kate Clemens as he hits this one deep into left field. Back it goes and that ball nearly leaves the yard and bounces off of the fence. All the runners score and Clemens ends up at third base with a bases clearing triple. Pitt State leads three to nothing. Next batter to the play, Austin Warkin slaps this through the left side. That adds another run. Gorillas now lead four to nothing. Still in the fourth, Blake Mosley continues the gap band rally as he hits this one all the way out to the wall. And check out the slide by Mosley as he goes into third base with an RBI triple. Pitt State takes game one against Rogers State 11 to one. The Gorillas can advance to next weekend with a win tomorrow. Well, Pitt State softball planned to begin its MIAA tournament run yesterday in the quarterfinals against Fort Hayes State. But because of bad weather, the game got pushed back until this morning at 11.30 a.m. Well, after the delay, no surprise here. The Gorillas take down the Tigers 7 to nothing in the quarterfinals. PSU outfielder Courtney Story, the former Crowder Rough Rider, gets her first home run of the season and the win. Afterwards, the Gorillas get a few hours to rest before playing in their semifinal game, but playing two games in one day does not face the Gorillas at all. They win the semifinals as well, taking down Central Oklahoma 4-1. to one. PSU advances to the MIAA Tournament Championship, where they will face the number one seed Rogers State, who won both of the regular season matchups between these two teams. Meanwhile, Crowder Softball is playing in their Region 16 tournament against Jefferson College. Rough Riders get the win 4-2 in extra innings. They advance to the title game tomorrow at noon. Well, can you believe it? Earlier this week, a swarm of bees delayed the Dodgers and Diamondbacks game where an unsung hero beekeeper came to remove the swarm before first pitch. And while the beekeeper did such a good job with social media buzzing about it, he earned himself his own baseball card. How about that? He is now worth a million dollars. I guarantee <laughs> you that is that is now worth more than the most expensive Babe Ruth card guarantee. Well, it can't sting to have that much money. Oh, you're you're killing it today, aren't you? He's, I can't believe you right now. <laughs> That's a look at sports and we're more with that. We're back with more after this. <laughs>
Sky Casino. Fridays in May from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Play for your chance to win up to $10,000. Well, we do have another round of storms moving in early tomorrow morning, about 4 a.m., starting to make its way into the western counties. We'll keep an eye on those storms. I'll be here in the station watching it. Uh, we do have a low risk again Sunday morning, another round of storms. But that main threat that we're looking at for storms is Monday evening into early Tuesday morning. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Today kicked off the first day of Cowtown Days in Baxter Springs, Kansas. It's an annual celebration that pays homage to the Baxter Springs, to Baxter Springs being the first Cowtown in Kansas. Events kicked off at 6 p.m. with live music and free hot dogs for all those who attended. And speaking of hot dogs, today also involved a hot dog eating contest, arguably the most entertaining part about today great because we're excited to be able to do it because it's just good clean family fun hometown uh, people get excited about it uh, the first year like I say it was kind of accident the way it happened and then the next year it was you know people really wanted it and uh, it's really turned into quite a little event I eat food really every day of every minute so I, I love food and I have and I haven't eaten biscuit all day besides at school so I'm I've been I've been um, laying with some not eat for two hours two hours so I'm hungry. <laughs> Events will resume tomorrow with a free breakfast at 8.30 a.m. Plus local vendors and food trucks will still be available. Well, hot dog eating contest, not the most athletic sport out no, there, but, but it's delicious, right? Yeah, yeah. And how about those Pitt State softballs? Yeah, right I there? mean, you know what? They get, just keep adding to those awards. Uh, now they have a chance to win the MIAA tournament. And if they do, it's their first appearance since 1995. That's so huge. they're breaking all the records now. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, that's a look at everything for tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the weekend show from all of us here at KOAM News. Have a great night.